With only just seven months at the helm as editor-in-chief of Glamour SA, Nondando Mposo is already noticeably adding her unique touch and changing the face of the magazine one issue at a time. The future of the print and publication industry hangs in the balance, however, due to the effects of the national lockdown. To put things into perspective, Nondando joins me now. Welcome to The Loft, Nondando. Thank you for having me, Faye. How are you? I'm good, girl. I celebrate you. I salute you. We are seeing <laughs> black girl magic in full effect here. Congratulations on your new appointment. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Now, your journey has been a long one. You first studied architecture through um, DUT, you know? home at Tech Queen, and you were yeah. a trailblazer there through the print industry now we're seeing. So talk me through about some of the changes that came about from architecture now to print. Well, architecture remains my very close industry or passion that I'm still very much passionate about. I still, I'm still a big fan of architectural photography and design as a whole. Mm. But literature, English, writing has always been my first love. I mean, in high school, I entered a lot of poetry competitions. I won some. <laughs> and my mom used to be a library assistant. Stand. So I spent a lot of time in the library reading, writing, and just getting inspired by words. So I think it was only natural that I progressed towards this industry. You've had a long HR journey to Editor-in-Chief. Briefly chat to me about this experience. My future or my path in the industry started as an intern in independent media. This was when I did a, a year-long internship with independent media. And so from there, they took us on. There was a group of us, and I started writing for the Cape Argus, the Cape mm. Times, and literally, like, most of the titles in independent media. And I progressed to become a lifestyle writer, a lifestyle editor, and, yeah, here I am now. So it's been quite a big journey in the, within the industry itself. Now we're under lockdown. So a lot of us have no. to work from home. We don't have the luxury of our offices where we can escape the babies that need our attention. And now we have to, you know, adapt to this new normal. So how are you coping in this new space? I just started my tenure as an editor-in-chief in Glamour when the whole epidemic actually reached our, our shores. Mm. So just when I was fighting, I was finding my feet on my second issue and then suddenly, you know, there was hard lockdown. We all had to pack up, we all had to begin working from home, and I don't think anybody kind of planned or saw this coming, but we've all just adjusted. I, I have an incredible team that I work with. It's, it's basically been about adapt or die. I want uh, to go into how now some publications have had to close shop as a result of the national lockdown. Why do you think that this is, and how has your magazine managed to stay afloat in the wake of these trying times? Yeah, I wouldn't attribute entirely publications closing shop to the lockdown mm. because when I entered in the industry, the, the demise of the print industry was already looming. Mm. You know, each year we enter each year with like, is this the year that we all going to close shop? So I think the, the lockdown was kind of the final nail on, on the coffin, if you might put it like that, mm. because instantly or very fast, a lot of us had to move to digital, even though digital has been, you know, something that been, we've been talking about, that we've been moving towards, what the lockdown has forced us to do is innovate and quite fast. Uh -huh. So hanging on hopefully for a long time because that's what we've been doing it's hard for everybody it's tough for us as well but we're innovating we're coming up with new ideas to work how to connect with our readers and I think it's happening yeah, it is happening. Glamour is doing such an incredible job. I know we were speaking off camera about Boiti's cover and the month yes. before you had Connie Ferguson trailblazing time and time again. I mean, hats hey. off to you. So as someone who seems to be doing really, really well in our eyes at Afternoon Express, do you have any advice for those in the print media industry that are struggling, don't know whether to call it quits or to trod on and keep strong? 
what I can say and what we are actually, you know, implying or applying right now is hang in there and innovate, learn as much as you can because times are changing and very fast. So it's time for us to think on our feet. It's, it's time for us to find ways to connect with our readers, to actually draw the attention of younger readers who are on social media, who are more on digital versus print. So how do we win them over? So it's time for us to be agile. It's time for us to collaborate more with brands because most brands are done with just slapping an ad on a page, for mm -hmm. instance. So we, we, we're looking at new ways of working, but yeah, we, do, we don't know how or what the, the future holds, but we just have to do our best, keep learning, innovating, and hanging in there. And just uh, on a very personal note, being two <laughs> strong black females from Durban, where the community thinks in the same way and almost never make it out, what message of encouragement do you have to the young girl who looks up at you and says, Mommy, I also want to be an editor-in-chief one day? <laughs> Don't stop dreaming. <laughs> Don't stop believing that you can be whatever you want mm. in your life. I mean, I sold up and I used up all my savings to come to Cape Town enough to survive six months. So take that step towards your dream and you'll never know. <laughs> and on that note, you will never know. Thank you so much, Nondando, for joining us today. So much, Riley. It was a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Bye. The revolution might not be televised after all, but could be documented in a publication near you and may come sooner than we thought, with more and more industries changing their business and operational model.